morning once again. It's always good to have you here. We will start with the, the decision of the committee. As my colleague said, met yesterday, and the committee decided to leave the repo rate unchanged at 6.5%. And this decision was taken with a view to support domestic economic activity, and at the same time, um, as, as we always emphasize, to maintain the one-on-one -on -one link between the Namibia dollar and the South African rent. Let me now start with the, the global or the economic activities or um, economic developments that, that explain the, the decision of the Monetary Policy Committee. Just a quick summary of, um, of these global economic developments. Um, if, you, if you start at the global level, um, I'm sure we are now aware that um, the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, released revised economic outlook last week during the annual meeting. And the key message that is really coming from there is that there is a synchronized decline in global growth, which is op opposite to what we have seen in the recent past, when more than 70% of the of the countries in the world were actually showing an upward movement in growth. So that trend has now reversed. We are now seeing a downward trend in the majority of countries in the world. So global growth has been revised downward. For 2019 alone, um, global growth is expected to be in the region of 3% compared to 36 recorded in, in 2018. So as you can see, between 2018, there is uh, it's a decline of about 0.6% in, in global growth. Still positive, 3%, um, not too small, but as you can see, there's a decline in global growth. And this is on account of um, advanced countries are softening, um, particularly the manufacturing sector. Uh, global manufacturing is uh, it, it's, it's very weak. And one of the factors that explain that is the trade tension between our two uh, major economies of the world, which is the US and China. Um, these trade tensions have negatively affected manufacturing um, because if, if trade has slowed down, and trade has slowed down because of these trade, trade tensions, um, it also then mean, mean manufacturing manufacturing um, will be negatively affected. And that's what we are seeing happening in, the, in global, global output and global trade. Going forward for 20, 2020, there is an expectation that the global, global growth is going to improve to 3.4%. So it, it, it looks like this trend is going to, to be reversed by, by next year. So, and, and let's keep our hope strong that uh, this trend will indeed materialize. If we come to the Namibian situation, um, the story has not changed much from what we have told you before, um, that domestic economic activity in Namibia continue to remain weak on account of um, a number of sectors. If you look at agriculture, we already know that the um, agricultural sector has been badly affected by the drought um, and of course it has got consequences in other sectors such as services as well so retail and wholesale trade is also um, it, it, it's still registering uh, poor performances um, mining particularly diamond mining um, is also registering poor performances um, however there is um, some silver lining there in the sense that um, the manufacturing sector has performed much better um, during the first eight months of, of this year. So those th three, four other sectors registering poor performances, but manufacturing uh, actually doing much better. Um, and, and therefore, that's something that, um, that we should celebrate for, at least it's something that is, uh, that is growing in the Namibian economy. When it comes to inflation, or maybe before we, we come to inflation, you, I know you'll be asking me what will be the projection for, for 2020. Our view is that for 2019 is still going to be weak, 2019 as a whole. 
Um, but we are hoping that 20, 2020 will be a better year. Of course, absent um, things like bad weather, if we hopefully get better rain, um, beginning of the rain season this year, and any other negative development. If you're absent that, we expect that we will, may start to see a small recovery in growth next year, 2020. So that's on growth. On inflation, inflation continues to be, to be manageable, continues to be managed, uh, con well contained. Um, if you look at the average for the first eight months of the year, it's standing at 4.1%, so that's quite re reasonably low. Um, compared to the to what we have seen previously, and and if you take the the, the latest month, which is September, inflation is ta is standing at 3.3 percent. So as you can see, this is this has this is a downward trend because in August inflation was standing at 3.7. So the downward trend is continuing, and for the year 2019 as a whole, we expect inflation to average. 3.9, as you can see, is below 4%. So inflation, the story on inflation, it, it, it's quite encouraging. And, and, and therefore, for the whole year, the 3.9, it's something which we believe is achievable. When it comes to domestic credit, we, um, the, the picture has not, has not changed that much from what we, we told you previously. Um, Domestic credit, private sector credit continues to, or growth of in, in private sector credit continues to be more or less flat, edging up slightly to 6.9% uh, um, from about 6% if you compare the first eight months of the year compared to the corresponding period of last year. So you can see there's a small uptick, mainly because of businesses that are, um, are borrowing slightly more. But the picture has actually not changed that much. Individuals, which is perhaps a good development, um, have not increased their, their uptake for credit. In fact, the growth there of growth of credit going to individuals um, has actually slowed down. So when it comes to international reserves, um, there has been some decline in international reserves, not, not significant. Um, international reserves is now standing at 32.3 um, um, versus 30, 35, I believe 35.2 um, as we told you before. Um, so if you can see there's a small, a small decline in, in reserves, but it's still res the, the levels of uh, the level of reserves still continue to be um, to be sufficient to be able to support our international obligations and also to support the one-on-one -on -one link between the, the Namibia dollar and, and the South African rent. Um, if you convert that in terms of um, import cover, reserves are able to cover uh, about 4.3 months of, of imports. So as you can see, there's not really a significant change in, in the level of reserves and they continue to be sufficient. So these are the developments that explain the decision of the Monetary Policy Committee. Um, and, and, and as I said before already, the, the decision is that for now, the repo rate will remain unchanged at 6.5. Thank you for your kind attention. We can have a discussion. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Shimi. And uh, with that, uh, we open the floor for an engagement, as we usually do. And um, yes, the logistics of that is that you raise your hand, you state the organization or the media outlet that you represent, and then you can go ahead and ask or post your question. Gabriel. The target of the, of the monetary policy is to, to make sure that the business have access to credit or make credit cheaper. Now, currently, uh, based on your quarterly report, we are indicating that now we have too much money in the we have too much money in the market, and it's indicated by the demand for your bonds, for your traditional bills, and it seems like money is just going that side. And if you look at the credit uptake from the from the individuals and the and the private sector, they are not taking up the money. 
So are we saying that the, is the MPC reaching a target like this? Because you say the main reason you are keeping the, the referees on change is to stabilize things, to improve the economic activities. So, but it seems like it's a different picture. Because you're spending in a lot of money right now, the economy is so liquid, and the credit uptake is it's not, it's not as, as you indicated that it's not moving. Is the monetary policy reaching a target like this? And the second one is uh, the global manufacturing sector is slowing down. And Namibia is a net export of uh, raw things that are used in, in the manufacturing sector of the world. And you indicated your reserve there. If the situation doesn't change, how are we going to maneuver around to make sure that our reserve comes through? Because I know we get our reserve through the export of this raw material. And if the manufacturing sector of the world doesn't pick up, what is the contingent plan? How are we going to maneuver around to make sure we have those reserves in place? Because we are net importer, we need we need uh, we need those reserves to be in place. Yeah, and just to emphasize on that, how are we going to divert that money from the bonds and the treasury bonds? Because we want to stimulate the economy, but the money is just going to your bonds, your papers. So maybe you can touch on that. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, thank you so much, Kevin. My name is Kevin. I am a reporter at uh, Eleven. Uh, I just want to juxtaposition of uh, what's happening in Britain. I think uh, we saw uh, the British government and the South African signing a new treaty uh, in case of a no deal Brexit. And uh, we have seen uh, the Prime Minister of Britain, his plan accepted by UK, by EU, but uh, rejected by the British. And uh, do we have any reason to press panic buttons as far as our trade with Britain now? Because there seems to be no certainty, although we have to wait for what's going to come in, on Saturday as to whether they're going to get an extension or whatever. But in the case of a no deal Brexit now, um, do you see any potential negative impact in terms of our trade relations? And why is it that we didn't really sign a, a direct treaty with the British? Do we have a treaty already? Just in case of a no deal Brexit. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Gabriel, let's start with Gabriel. Gabriel, what's, what's the target of monetary policy? The target of monetary policy is really to keep inflation controlled. That's the main function of this, or one of the main functions of the central bank, is to manage inflation. It's, uh, it's not to make credit cheaper. Credit is only, um, interest rate is only used as an instrument to manage, to manage inflation. And I'll tell you why, why we are doing that. Um, if, how does inflation get out of control? If there's too much money in the economy, chasing fuel goods, prices go up. And, and therefore, to control the rate of money that is in the economy, um, interest rate or central banks change interest rates so that there's not too much money in the economy that will create in, uh, inflation. There's also not too little money that will st stifle growth. So it's, it's, it's not about making credit cheaper. It's about targeting inflation. Now, how do we target inflation in Namibia? We target it by having linked our currency to the South African rent. And because we import significantly from South Africa, uh, we also then import the South Africa's inflation. That's how the system is put together. So you, I want you to understand it from that perspective. So what's the objective of monetary policy? It's it's, it's managing inflation. The ultimate goal is really managing inflation. Why do you want to manage inflation? Because when economies have got an inflation, an inflation problem, growth cannot take place. So central banks are set up for, for something like that. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not set up to manage, to make credit cheaper. Mm -hmm. So I hope we, we understand each other there. But if, before we move on, yes, I want you to be clear on that one. Yeah, just on that, on mm -hmm. that inflation. But we import everything, almost everything from South Africa. So mm -hmm. how much of the inflation that are you managing? Because we, I think we import also a bigger portion of South African inflation. So how much of the, our level of inflation are you managing? I like this discussion, because I think it will help us to educate others as well. OK, now, let's, let's understand our system. How Namibia decided that, uh, or the way Namibia decided to manage its inflation is to say, because we import a lot of goods from South Africa, and because we believe 
So far, South Africa has been managing its monetary policy very well. It has achieved reasonable inflation. We are comfortable with South Africa's inflation. And therefore, if we take our currency to the South African rand, we will be able to have inflation more or less in line with South Africa's inflation. That's why if you compare the two figures, the inflation figures in South Africa and Namibia, they always move together. So this, that system is, is put together to work like that. So whatever inflation you have here is more or less the inflation that you have in South Africa. So that's by design, because the exchange rate is, is, uh, is packed. Yeah, so are we together there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now that we have gotten that out of the way, you can, we, I can go to your next questions. Um, yes, you, you have talked about there's too much liquidity in the system. I think too much money in the system and the money is going to treasury bills. To, to some extent, um, you, you, you are correct in the sense that there has been, over the last two months or so, there has been a lot of interest in, in, in treasury bills financial institutions looking for investment outlets, um, which is in itself not a bad, a bad idea. Um, uh, I think what, what, what explains that is just that this, there was, they had enough money and they were looking for where to park this money, where to invest money, this money so that they can, they can make money for, for themselves as, 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 uh, as investors. Um, but this is always, there's always, uh, you know, this, 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 there are always volatility in, in the demand for treasury bills. Sometimes if there's too much money in the system, there will, there will be institutions looking for this type of instruments. And sometimes they find other investment outlets and where they can park their money. So it's, it's not something that, that was abnormal that we have seen in the last few, two months or so. So in fact, if you look at the latest numbers, um, the demand for treasury bills is, is no longer that strong. Um, so it's not something that, that is abnormal. And, 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 and the, the, the second thing is that when government is, is looking for, for money, it's to, fund its depo it's, it's to fund its deficit. Well, of course, we, have, we know that the government doesn't have enough revenue to cover its expenditure, and therefore it has to borrow. And that borrowing actually takes place through by doing these auctions, and this auction are subscribed by the financial institutions such as banks. So that's not the, it's actually an, a normal situation. Um, yeah, before you go from, mm, away from that one, mm, so yeah, my, my, my concern was, mm, is uh, are they maybe too reluctant to put their money in other various sectors of the economy? Like, uh, are they so reluctant that they can expand themselves, employ more, or invest in some other project? So, okay, that money is diverted to those uh, security. It's mm. not significant. Are we not able to say these guys are too reluctant to invest in other sectors? That's why they are diverting to safer securities because we regard the government takes them safer. Is that to the point, or the, or that investment is not that significant for us to make that conclusion? Yeah, I think I think the your your last statement is is probably more accurate. That as I said, I, I have not seen an abnormal situation. It's not that all of a sudden there's too much money going to treasury bills. If you look at the, the pattern has been more or less the same. It's, it's, there's nothing abnormal, um, abnormal on what we have seen the last two months or so. Um, and the fact that commercial banks, are, uh, commercial banks are not the real investors themselves. You are the investors. So if you have projects that need, need funding, they are actually on a daily basis looking for people with good projects and, and, and therefore if they cannot find projects there will be some of this money will go into treasury bills but if there were other projects that or good opportunities that we can present to commercial banks or investors can, can present to commercial banks uh, some of this money will go into those, go into those opportunities so I think it's, it's for us as, pro, as investors now you, you are not an investor you are a journalist is for the investor to actually <laughs> <laughs> present these investment opportunities to banks so that this, uh, uh, this money can also go into this investment opportunity so that we can create jobs and, um, and, and, and employ, I mean, can, can create jobs and, and also help the economy to grow. So it's, it's not that, okay, now government is competing with the private sector and therefore they cannot put in, 
they cannot invest in, in private projects. I think it's just a question of we don't find enough investment opportunities in the economy so that we can put this money into, into those projects. So no crowding out? No, cr no, we don't see crowding out at the moment. Okay. Um, I think the, the other one was on, I think it's still, um, it's still with Gabriel. I think it's on, on reserves and the manufacturing uh, trends in the world. Um, I think we, we don't sell manufactured goods. I think we, we sell commodities. And, and you are correct to say that the demand for commodities have been weak, and they have been weak since 2016. Why it has been weak? Because one of the countries that have been taking up, in fact not one, in fact the country that has been taking up about 50% of all the commodities has now, first of all growth has come down, that's China, I'm talking about China. It's China is no longer growing in the region of 11% as it happened a decade ago. It's now growing in the region of 6%. So they used to take up about 50% or more than 50% of all the commodities in the world. Um, that is no longer the case because the China has also finished building all the infrastructure that they, they used to, be, to build before and all the factories that they used to, be, to build before. They are in fact now um, changing their economic strategy to concentrate more on services because they believe that continuing to be the factory of the world is not sustainable. So. Commodities, because of that, have been very soft. Have, have, have been soft because of um, because the demand from China is no longer that strong. I think what is clear for us as, as commodity producers is that we should not continue just to rely on commodities, because commodity prices go up and down, um, and that's what we have learned in history that the price of commodities always is not always stable. You will have maybe five or ten years of of um, of higher prices. And then you will have another 10 years of lower prices. So we, we need to be able to live with that. I think what is key is to diversify our economies so that we can produce other things that we can sell to other people. And I think that's a challenge for all the commodity producers. In fact, if you actually look at the global um, development now, you will see that most of the commodity producers are not growing. Why? Because the demand for commodities is very weak. Um, and therefore, the question is really how do we diversify to produce, also produce some of those manufactured items? How do we diversify in some services that we can sell to our outsiders, such as tourism, maybe, um, you know, make our, our tourism more vibrant, attract more tourists, create more jobs? Those are the kind of things that we need to, we need to start thinking about, not to entirely rely on commodities. I hope I answer your question there. Um, Kevin Brexit, that's a very interesting development, um, Brexit. I think what is comforting is that when you probably saw South Africa signing, um, you probably saw South Africa signing on behalf of SACU, because SACU has actually uh, signed an arrangement with the, with the UK in the sense that the benefits that SACU used to get, and maybe as part of SACU, SACU used to get from, from the European Union will be extended to, to SACU by Britain, even when Britain is out of, uh, out of the European Union. So because of that, um, it, it means we will not be negatively affected by, by Brexit. I hope I answer your question there. So and therefore, the, yeah. SAC will negotiate as a block because SAC is really a customs union is, and a customs union should negotiate as a block because it's, it's really one country as far as trade is concerned. And that's why whatever arrangement, uh, trade arrangement that uh, any member country of SAC is wants to sign, it can only sign as, on be, as, as a block. It cannot only sign as an individual country. That's the... the um, the principles that are, that are in the SACWA agreement. Hope I answer your question there, Kevin. Thank you. All right. So let's take another round. Uh, maybe Lazarus, you, you were you're trying to intervene there. Maybe you have an interesting intervention. 
Yeah, that's the same. If you're not seeing a crime in our DM, should we expect to see one? Are we looking at seeing one? Alongside what you already asked. Or perhaps it will cool down because we are going out to the, uh, the African Northern Bank, the African fight. See, there is a tech team there of the Namibian. Oh, they, are, they, are they both working for the Namibian? Yeah. When, oh, okay. when one drops the button, the other one picks mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. Francis? No, I'm good. I'm there are no questions this afterwards. Unfortunately, you're too dumb. Um, Kelvin? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. You, you have given us the press release, and uh, some of us, we come from uh, radio. Maybe to just give you an opportunity to just uh, recap a little bit on the issue of forex trade. We know you cannot comment about the whole court case of my, Michael Amshelero because it's with the courts. But maybe on record right now, as we are live on air, to our people out there, is forex trading illegal in Namibia? Just setting the record straight again. Online forex trading. Online forex trading. Yeah. Okay, let's start with crowding out. And maybe let's demystify what is crowding out. Crowding out, it's when a country has got limited financial resources and therefore limited capital that is looking for investment and government is taking up all of that. And therefore private sector cannot get capital to, to invest. That's, that's the definition of crowding out. Yeah? So we are on the same page there. Okay. Now, we don't see that happening in Namibia now because they, we, Namibia has actually in, a lot of savings. So if you look at the amount of pension funds that we have invested outside, it's quite significant. It's in the region of, two, if you add up all, all the savings together, it's in the region of about 200 billion. So that's money that is looking for investment outlets. So, and, and therefore, if we create investment opportunities here, some of that money will come back. And therefore, the competition for resources, in my view, it's, it's very limited. Because the u universe for resources is, is very large. So, and therefore, for, for you to reach that level of, of really where government is actually going to take up all the resources, and there won't be anything left for the private sector. I think it's, uh, it, it's, it's a bit far-fetched in, in, in my view. Um, if we didn't have enough savings in this country, yes, crowding out can happen. Because you know, you will be scrambled for the little resources that, are, that, that is there. And if government is the one creating better investment opportunities for the investors, the money will go to government. But here we have money that is looking for, that is looking for investment outlets. Even the money that we say it's a regulation that 30 or 45 must remain here in Namibia. It's now looking for investment outlets. Um, so if, I think the issue is really to create those investment opportunities so that this money can go there. So we have not enough money in this country, in my view. Hope we are on the same page there? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yes, Carol. Um, everybody trade in Forex all the time. Kevin, when you go on holiday, you buy foreign exchange, isn't it? I do, yeah. Yeah. And when you buy a property outside, you buy foreign exchange. That's right. Yeah. So whether you, you buy foreign exchange to go on holiday, whether you buy foreign exchange to buy a house, that's forex trading. The only difference is that uh, you're doing it through legal means. Yeah. So forex, forex trading, as long as you do it through authorized dealers, because when you buy when you want to buy foreign exchange to go on holiday, you go through a, an authorized dealer, a commercial bank or bureau de charge or something like that. An entity that is authorized to sell foreign exchange to you. Yeah? And there's no other way of doing it. Yeah, I know there are people who are claiming that they are doing forex trading, uh, but this, they, they are doing something else. That's, that's something else is illegal. Uh, we're not able to comment on, the specific, on that specific case that you're talking about. But just be sure that if you, are doing, if you are doing your forex trading and you are buying your forex through legal means, that's perfectly within the law. But if you are doing something else, stealing other people's money, and then you're claiming that you are doing forex, forex, forex trading, that's something else. Are you saying online foreign, forex trading is illegal? No, I'm not saying that. You go to your commercial banks, 
you have an account there and you say I want to convert my deposit into a US dollar yeah doing it online that's perfectly normal so the, there's no difference between that and you going to a commercial bank and say I want to buy a house in the UK yeah whether you do it um, online or you transfer the money through normal corresponding banking uh, transfer it's, it's pretty normal so the mode of doing it is no, it's not really the issue is how are you buying your forex trading I mean how are you doing your forex or not even how are you doing it is are you buying your foreign exchange from an authorized dealer yeah and that's the only way you can do it. So there are people who are claiming that they're actually doing forex trading, which, which, they are, which they are not doing. They are doing something else. So online, not online, that as long as you do it within the normal authorized means, there's no, nothing wrong with that. Just go and don't go and steal other people's money and then you claim that you are doing forex trading. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Because we, we, do, we do all other kind of activities and then we claim that we are doing forex trading. Or you go and do forex trading through illegal means. That's something else. But as long as you buy a foreign exchange from, from authorized dealers, whether you're doing it online, we will not have a problem with you. Because you will be complying with the rules and regulations that, that we have in Namibia to regulate such activities. I hope I answer your question, Kevin. Okay. Yeah. The follow up, Gabriel. You're the last one. Yeah. I I was afraid to ask that. Okay. Can I speculate on forex? Again, just explain what is speculation on forex. Because I think there's a limited understanding of things. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about just converting my Namibian dollar into euros. Mm -hmm. No. I'm talking about capitalizing on the margin, on the volatility of the currencies. And that is what people are doing. Is that illegal? I'm not talking about just changing my dollar into euro ones. No, I'm, check, I'm talking about looking at the market. What is the difference in currencies? Capitalizing that volatility between currencies. So I speculate on it. If they go up, I put money into this one. If, it go, if the exchange rate is favorable to me, then I put into it. Is that illegal? I think that is where the people, we are not getting it. And again, when you're talking about uh, authorized dealers, are you only limiting, limiting the definition to the Namibian dealers? Or also I can use international dealers? That is the way people are not getting it. Because none of, uh, I don't know if we have any of these institutions that are speculating on currencies. I don't know if the banks are there and I can go there to say that I want to, to speculate on the, on the volatility, on the movement of the currencies. I don't know if they can allow me to do it. And again, why are you limiting us to banks? Why are you limiting us to dealers if I'm speculating, if I want to do forex trading? You know, I think that is the question the people, why are they why are angry? Why are you limiting them to certain institutions that are going to ask me money to pay for them to speculate on, on something that I can do myself, that I'm good at it, I can read the market myself? So that is where maybe the, the explanation needs to, to be. Okay, okay. Let's, let's start there. I, I like to be very basic. That's why I gave you an example of a house. Okay, a house is, 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 is a financial, it's an asset. Yeah, just like you have a bank deposit in, in the UK, which will be in pounds. Yeah, let's say you buy pounds. Eh? I'm trying to simplify things for you. You have a deposit, you have 100 million, let's say you are a rich man, you have 100 million in Namibia here. Yeah, in Namibia dollars and you want to get them into pounds. So what do you do? You will buy pounds, right? And pounds can only be invested in, in the UK, because that's where pounds are legal tenders, nowhere else. I want us to be, yeah? So you have now bought your pounds. So you, you have a deposit in a bank in, in the UK, which is in pounds. And then you decide, no, I don't no longer want pounds. I want to have a deposit in the US. I, I'm now converting my pounds into US dollars. That's, that's trading. That's the definition, that's my definition of trading. Just like I gave you an example of a house. You have your 100 million here in Namibia, in Namibia, you decide, I want to buy a house in the UK, which is a financial asset. Yeah? 
So now I have a house. I decide I don't want this house anymore. I want to buy a house in, 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 in Germany. I have to convert this into euros and buy another house there. It's, it's exactly the same activity. Yeah, just a different asset. They, when you are saying trading in foreign currency or speculation, you have your asset is a deposit. Yeah, in US dollar or in pounds. The other one is your asset is a house. Exactly the same underlying transactions. It's just a different asset. So that is not outlawed. You can do that. Whether it's a house, whether it's a bank deposit, you can do that. How do you get your foreign exchange, uh, Gabriel? Well, 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 let's say you, you have your foreign exchange. How will you get it now? Yeah. If you want to trade, where will you get it? From the bank. Exactly. Where else? Mm, the bird exchange, the small ones. Okay, you are saying we are limiting you to banks. Where else? Yeah, the trading is what you are limiting. Uh, no, not, <laughs> not the, 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 the trading. Where else can you buy your foreign exchange in Namibia? Because I want us to be very, very clear and uh, understand the, the situation. Yeah, those are the only institutions that will give you foreign exchange in Namibia. Mm -hmm. So if you have Namibian dollars, my friend, unless you have your, your U.S. dollars under a matras, which is illegal, because if you have US, for any foreign currency under a matras, it will be illegal, because all the current foreign currency has to be with, with, the, with authorized dealers, which will be banks and bureau de charges. Yeah, those are the only authorized dealers. And therefore, you can't get foreign exchange anywhere else that you need to transfer outside so that you can start trading. So, I hope you understand each other there. When you say, we are, why are you limiting us to banks? You have no other choice. So if you want to transfer your money from here, the, or, those are the only institutions that, that can give you foreign exchange. Unless you tell me any other one. No, no other one. So once I get to the other side, I can do whatever. You are on your own? Yeah, I think that is where the confusion was, I think. I hope the confusion is now cleared. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Is that all? Thank you, Gabriel. We have indulged you just too much today. But I think we needed those pertinent questions to be asked so that we, we provide clarity. Thank you so much once again for honoring our invitation. Um, with that, please do stay for an informal discussion on, on some of these issues. But uh, uh, yes, let's get the conversation going. Uh.